Hey everybody. We are looking at my 55 gallon garami tank. And I just fed everybody. I've got some algae wafers on the bottom. And right as I was getting my camera out, I wanted to see if we could get any video of this little guy. This is my new uh, golden zebra loach. It's a tiny little thing. It's actually smaller than the neon that I have in this tank. In fact, you can see the neon right there. And just below the neon is my little hillstream loach. So that gives you an idea how tiny this little golden zebra loach is, or gold zebra loach. I've seen it listed both ways. And I just wanted to get a little look at it. I was hoping it was going to make an appearance, and right as I came in with my camera, it was out and about, so we actually did get a little bit of a look at it. We've also got a lot of activity down at this end. This is where I've got most of the algae wafers. And whenever I drop the algae wafers in, everybody goes crazy for them. You can see my coolie loaches in the background there a little bit. The grommies coming in to get in on the action. Of course, the Siamese algae eaters. And then all of my other loaches, like my skunk loaches and the angelicus loach, come in and try to get in on the action. Uh, the high carry algae wafers are a very, very popular food in most of my fish tanks. So what I was really hoping to get a look at was that little golden zebra loach, and we did, so I'm happy it's still in there. I was a little bit worried about it for a day. I did not see it. Uh, not yesterday, but the day before. I didn't see it all day, and then I didn't see it all the way up until last night as I was turning the lights out. I got a look at it, and what I'm concerned about is that striped Raphael catfish right there might eat it. They're not really aggressive, they don't have a big mouth, and they're not like your average catfish that's going to go around patrolling the tank at night looking for other fish to eat. But they are bottom feeders, they are nocturnal feeders, and they are certainly opportunistic feeders. So some fish, such as neons, are notorious for sleeping near the bottom. And every time I've ever tried to put neons in this tank, one by one they've disappeared until I've had no neons left. This lone last neon has been in the tank for quite a long time now. And all I can assume is that it's got the odd sort of quirk that it sleeps somewhere safe. It probably sleeps above a leaf or between two, uh, you know, crevice in the rocks or something. And as such, it has survived. Uh, anything that sleeps down near the bottom of the tank is just going to be food for that striped Raphael. And so I've worried that this loach might fall into that uh, category. It's a small fish, and loaches are usually bottom-dwelling type fish, but they're also pretty clever. They hide, they burrow, they get under stuff and in things. This, I call it my tree stump down here, but this big piece of wood is basically a loach hotel. If you look underneath of it, it's big and hollow, like really hollow. I don't mean just sort of convex. It's like sort of broken well up onto the inside of it. So there's a lot more room under there than you might think. And I, it's like a clown car. When the loaches come out of there, well, we'll often see the tail of my red tail loach sticking out of the back. The red tail loach is very reclusive and stays in there all the time. But you can see the coolie loaches kind of hide under those rocks and kind of go underneath the edge of the wood. And then all the other loaches come and go. I've got three or four of the skunk loaches still in there. I'm not entirely sure how many I have. I think it's still four of them in there. But I know for a fact that there's at least three. And then, of course, I've got that Angelicus loach. And so now I think the little golden zebra loach probably spends its time in there and sleeps in there as well. So I don't have to worry too much about anything happening to it. And it is going to grow in to be about the size of that Angelicus loach right there, that sort of brown and white spotted one. I'm really excited about it. It's a really, really pretty loach. I think it's going to be gorgeous by the time it grows up and starts showing its full uh, colors. I've never seen one before. Now, I've got some striated bodia in my 29 miscellaneous here. And I was told when I bought them that these were striated bodia, but their common name was zebra loach. And if we ever get a good look at one of them, that right there, if you see that tail sticking out, that's actually the tail of my 
uh, clown pleco. So we can see that my clown pleco is still in here doing well. My striated bodias are, there's one of them, there's a couple of them. They're very outgoing and they're very playful, but they're also a little bit skittish. Whenever I, you know, stand here booming my voice at the tank and holding the camera right in front of them, uh, they tend to get a little bit reclusive for a few minutes, but they get used to it and then they come right back out and start doing their thing and darting and dashing around. Uh, these are the only fish I've ever bought through the mail, and I got them years and years ago when I first started keeping fish, and I got six of them. I got five in the mail, and I got one from a fish store. And one of them died years ago. I have no idea whether it was a male one or the fish store one. But after that one died, I've never had a problem with them since. So those uh, loaches in this tank are probably seven years old now. And I've had five of them living in a 29 for all that time. So they don't get any bigger than that either. So anyway, I'm on and on about my loaches. I always talk about my loaches because I really, really like them. I think they're really cool fish. And I think everybody should get the pleasure of owning at least some loaches at some point if you're into keeping fish. Loaches are definitely one you want to put on your list of fish to get one day and check them out. And I know some of the loaches are said to get really big. Uh, the clown loaches, for example, get to be like a foot. There's a lot of loaches out there that get three or four inches. You know, these skunk loaches, my angelicus loach, the striated bodia that we just looked at, and then, of course, that little uh, zebra golden zebra loach and presumably if there's a golden zebra loach there's sort of the regular model as well uh, that's just got the standard paint job and you can probably find one of those too so once again I'm gonna recommend getting some loaches mine is doing fine and on a final note on sort of a downer note uh, for those of you who follow along on all my videos or regularly uh, you'll know that when I bought that loach I also bought an angelfish that was in my um, 125 gallon native tank and it is still alive but it has been transferred over to my quarantine tank because it looks pretty rough both of its eyes are all cloudy it's swimming around in corkscrews and it's not doing well so while my quarantine tank is just blasted with ick right now we're going to have some video about that coming up in the near future i'm waiting to find out uh what's going to happen because the medication seems to be doing absolutely nothing i seem to have discovered some unkillable uh strain of ick so we're going to be talking about that in the near future but that's where my angelfish is in that tank full of ick and hopefully we'll just see what happens it is being treated and again there'll be some video coming up about that in the very near future so make sure you subscribe you won't miss that or anything else and then don't forget of course we have been looking at my 55 gallon garami tank so thanks for watching hope you enjoyed and i will see you real soon in the next one